the sound of war. And stay ye not, but pursue after your enemy and smite the hindmost of them. Fall upon 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 them. Greetings. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth. You should be proud that you are Muslim. You should be proud that you are in a religion that started off strange and it will end strange. Shouts out to all my Muslim brothers and sisters all over the world who worship God with no partners. Today we going to finish before Abraham was I am. What does that mean? Now the part one is definitely doing good. It's only been out for a week and it's almost at about 800 views right now. Many people are watching. Many people are listening but many people are not asking questions because you know what? The truth, it's harsh. The truth hurts, but you know what? The truth will heal you. You're not going to hear nobody say that Paul was a false Abraham. That came out of this house right here in the house of David. Paul was a false Abraham. And the problem with the Christian is they fail to believe their own prophet. The prophet Isa, you call him Jesus. He said everything he said was a parable. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 13 and let's go to verse 34. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable spake he not unto them. Everything Jesus spoke was a parable. He spoke in parables. Why? To hide the truth. Now, you surface readers, Christians are surface readers. They're on the surface. Okay, you got to dig deep for the deep things of God. You have to go deeper. Everything Jesus said was a parable. Let's get more scripture. Matthew 13, 35, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, and this is Isaiah, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, and I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world, like the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. That is a secret. And that's not going into one hanging on a cross. You Christians are surface reading the Bible, man. And it's going to destroy you. You have to dig deeper, okay? Tell someone, go deeper. Tap somebody on the shoulder and tell them to go a little deeper. All right, let's get more scripture on Jesus in the parables. I would like to read Matthew 13, 11. And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. So the problem with these Christians is they read my father and automatically they just think he's talking about God almighty. They failed to realize Jesus spoke in parables. He spoke in parables. And Jesus was a person who was highly misunderstood. Everything he said, most of the time, they misunderstood him. They did not know what he was saying. Now, even the disciples had a problem with this. Okay? And he would tell them over and over again. And then he told them finally, oh, fools, he called them fools, slow of heart to believe 
all of the prophets beginning at Moses. And then he began to expound on them. And I believe that to be the same things I'm teaching on my channel. And that is the types and shadows. He took them to Cain, killing Abel. He showed them how that was a picture of him. He took them to Isaac, being so-called sacrificed. And how he was rescued. And he showed them that that was a picture of him. Then he took them to Joseph and he said, look, Joseph was falsely murdered. That was a picture of me. Because when you ask the Christian, where is Jesus in the Old Testament? They're going to take you to Isaiah 53. They're going to take you to the Psalms. OK, they're not going to go in Moses because Moses is against a son dying for the father's sins. He's against that. They ain't going to take you to Moses. But Jesus tells you amazingly, starting at Moses, it's about me. He knew all of the types and shadows. And types and shadows is where is that. I truly believe that right here in the house of David, we have brought back the types and shadows. Because simply you cannot deny the false murder of Joseph. And you can't deny that Joseph was a picture of Christ. All of the white men are teaching this. All of the so-called smart people, scholars, and theologians are telling you that Joseph was a picture of Christ. But the white man's pride won't allow him to say that just like Joseph was falsely murdered, Jesus was falsely murdered. No, because he stole Jesus, painted him white, made him a god. He stole that religion, okay? He literally took Jesus, painted him white, and made him God. He's not going to convert. And he is going to defend Christianity. Even on numerical errors. Even on typo errors. He's going to defend every mistake. Which is by the thousands. That are in the Bible. Because to him. Christianity belongs to him. And think about it. His face is on Christianity. Now, Jesus is portrayed as a white man, so he is going to defend it. Imagine if your face was on Christianity. Would you defend it? That's a hard question. Now, most of us are mad that they got this white Jesus picture all across the world, okay, portraying Jesus as white. But maybe that was a blessing for you in the skies because most people will not break away from Jesus simply because their face is on Christianity. Christianity belongs to the white man, all right, and his face is on it. Going back to the parables, there were things that were hidden from the foundation of the world. And the Christian, because he only loves John, he failed to read about Jonah. He failed to read about Joseph. He failed to read about Ehud. And all of these Bible characters, which is telling the same story over and over again. Okay? Paul is the missing piece to the puzzle. And he is literally in every story in the Old Testament. Okay. Paul was a picture of Pharaoh. Paul was a picture of Potiphar. Paul was a picture of Nimrod. Paul was a picture of Nebuchadnezzar. Paul was a picture of Haman. Paul was a picture of Ham. The first man to look upon his own father's nakedness. And he wasn't cursed as a result of it. You know who was cursed? His son Canaan, who had nothing to do with it. Just like the prophet Esau. He was born a slave of God. Now you'll know why in the Quran, Jesus, peace be upon him. The prophet Isa is called the slave of Allah because he was under many tutors. He was under. There was always someone greater than Joseph. There was always someone greater than Joshua. 
there will always be someone greater than Jesus. The Christians, they don't know how to put this in their mind and meditate on it and see. Because Allah guides whom he guides and he definitely misguides whom he misguides. Let's get back to Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. Jesus answered, I have explained the secrets about the kingdom of heaven to you, but not to others. You hear that, Christian? He didn't explain the secrets of the kingdom to the Pharisees. No, he left them blind. Go to John 9. He came to make people see and he came to make people blind. Everyone who has something will be given more. But people who do not have anything will lose even what little they have. I use stories when I speak to them because when they look, they cannot see. And when they listen, they cannot hear or understand. So God's promise came true. Just as the prophet Isaiah or Isa had said, these people will listen and listen but never understand. They will look and look, but never see. All of them have stubborn minds. They refuse to listen. They cover their eyes. They cannot see or hear or understand. If they could, they would turn to me and I would heal them. And if you actually go to that parable, God purposely sent Isaiah out to mislead and to make the ears of the people heavy and to blind them, okay? Because the last thing God wanted them to do was be healed and be converted. And this is the same thing that Esau, the prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, did. He walked around blinding people. And think about it. In John 5, they accused Jesus Of making God his father. Now you know those Pharisees was always off. They was always off. And even the Christians today, which are the offspring of the Pharisees, they are wrong today. They are saying that Jesus is God's son. Okay? And they actually are teaching that Jesus is God in the flesh. They're teaching that Jesus is the father, which doesn't make any sense. When you read John 20, Jesus says, I go to my God and your God on the cross. Supposedly, he says, why has God forsaken me? Now, what is he saying? Why did I forsake myself? Okay, we have a huge contradiction Whenever you try to make Jesus something that he's not, what it's called is exaggeration. That's what's happening right now. We have a lot of exaggeration and exaggeration is lying. We see that in Matthew chapter 19 when they came to him, particularly the rich young ruler. And he said, good master. And Jesus said, why callest thou me good? Why are you associating me with God? In the Daekwant Clay translation of the Bible. (laughs) Why are you associating me with God? Why are you calling me good? You know the psalmist. You know that favorite song of Israel. Praise the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Only God is good. According to the Bible, beginning at Chronicles, only God is good. And this man came to Jesus with that same exaggeration you Christians have today. And Jesus said, why are you calling me good? I bet you that made the most high proud. He was just like, wow, look at him. Associating no partners with me, which is The most hated religion today. That's what we say. Don't associate any partners 
with God. Oh, what an awesome balance of Jesus. Jesus said, why you call me good? And believe it or not, but the Christians have found a way to make Jesus say something else in that passage. Then they'll say Jesus was fully human and Jesus was fully God with no scriptures. All they can do is go to Philippians and, and go to the scripture where he counted it and not robbery to be equal with God and all of Paul's BS. OK, but there's no scripture that says Jesus was fully God and fully man. There's none. Peter, the apostle, he knew who Jesus was. He snatched Jesus up. Said, look at here in the Daquan Clay translation. What you tripping about? You know in the Quran you're not finna die? You ain't finna die? Okay, Peter snatched him up. Peter knew Jesus was a man. He tells you that in Acts 2.22. He says, a man approved of God. And I want to go to that scripture because that scripture is so important. And I'm not here to wake everybody up, okay? Only Allah can open the blinded eye, not me. I'm just here to put the truth out there. And I pray at least one person recover themselves from that snare in their Bible. Acts chapter 2 verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. That's the most overlooked sentence in that entire verse. He said, hear these words. Now, let's fast forward to Jesus. Don't he says, he that have ears, let him hear. He that have eyes, let him see. Right now, you need to be using your ears. Right now, you need to be using your eyes. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man. Pause. A man. A Christian scholar. A man. A man. Let me say it again. A man. Let that sink in a little bit. A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you. You know, Jesus said he can of himself do nothing. God did by him in the midst of you as you yourselves also know. That's the perfect balance of Jesus. He was nothing more than a messenger. Why are you mad at the prophet Muhammad? Peace and blessings be upon him. He told us the truth, although you hate him, he told us the truth. God used a man who could not even read to give us the truth. And you mad that he's highly honored? The man is highly honored because he gave us the truth. And this is what God does for a man that he wants to highly honor. The man is even mentioned in the Shahada. Every day we bless the family of Abraham and we bless the prophet of Muhammad because this is the man whom God highly honors. Whether that makes you mad, I don't care. I don't care. God ain't never been important in your life to sit there and read it. All you do is watch TV. You don't do nothing with studying. Nothing else has been important except for the next movie that come out. That's important. The next movie come out. That's important. That's your fault. You don't want to study the Bible because you have made the things of this world more important than God. Then you wonder why you blind. And your Bible knowledge is very poor because you never made much of the word of God. Then you want to sit there and be mad at a religion that worship God with no partners. Then you want to confuse these children out here. Got these children thinking Jesus is God and Jesus is a man. All this confusion. Jesus is telling you right there in the book of John chapter 8. A man that has told you the truth. Peter's telling you Jesus is a man. Son of man, son of man, son of man, son of man. Over 82 times in the New Testament. And you still think he's God. Okay? God has closed your eyes. Okay? Your ears are fat. And that's why you can't hear. And that's why you can't see. Now, let's get to the Yahweh thing. These Christians, they heard Jesus say, 
in the gospel of John chapter 8. Before Abraham was I am. Then they take that and they go to the Yad Heh Vod Heh, which is the actual name. And then they say, oh, it's Yahweh. Then they go crazy about this. I am. Jesus said, I am. So that means he's Yahweh. That means he's Yahweh. No, it don't. <laughs> Many people have said, I am. We all say, I am every day. That does not mean that we are the I am that I am. No, it don't. And if you go to Exodus 3.14, we have God Almighty, all powerful, sending Moses. He didn't wash his feet. Okay, he told him to take off the shoes of his feet because where he stand was holy ground. He didn't wash his feet, man. He's totally different than Esau. Okay, he said, take your shoes off. He didn't say, come over here, let me give you a foot massage. He didn't say, let me come over here and wash your feet. No, he sent out Moses. So think about it. The I am that I am was the person who sends messengers out. He wasn't going to go out and talk to Pharaoh. God Almighty sent a messenger by the name of Moses. So how are you saying Jesus is the I am and yet he's been sent out? And Jesus is constantly telling you, God sent me, God sent me, God sent me. In your own Bible, in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 11, Jesus is called the apostle. That's one whom you sent out. So how is the great I am that I am going to be a messenger now? That don't make no sense. That's why Islam has the perfect balance because we have one true God who is not a messenger. Your God in Christianity, although you think he's your God, your God really is Paul. Although you think <laughs> Jesus is your God was a messenger. God is not a messenger. Wake up. How the hell Jesus saying I am means that he is the I am that I am. No, that's what Christians read into that. He was trying to tell you guys, look, just like Isaac was saved from the sacrifice, I was saved from the sacrifice. And then he brought out their real daddy. Their real daddy was Paul. OK, the Pharisees gave birth to Paul. Paul was a son of the Pharisees. So all the time you see Jesus getting mad at the Pharisees, that was him getting mad at Paul. And he said before Abraham was I am, he was trying to tell you, look, I am the real Messiah who's coming before this false Abraham. OK, he was telling them their dad is the devil. He was telling them their dad is Paul and Think about Abraham. What was the whole reason of him bringing up Abraham? Anyway, Abraham was not a Jew. He had many children and the children of Israel had all did wicked stuff. So what did Abraham have to do in this context? This is clearly a parable. And I truly believe that this parable was speaking of another Abram, Abraham. This is Paul, the father of the Christian church. Abraham in the past had nothing to do with this whole context. He was speaking over their heads. He was speaking a parable and he was telling them, your dad is Abraham and the equivalent is the devil. And all you Christians who love that Trinity mess, you will have your Trinity in the lake of fire. As it is written in the book of Revelations, the false prophet and the beast and Satan will all be in the lake of fire. And that false prophet is the church and that beast is Paul. And we already know who the devil is. There's no mistake in him. All of you with that Trinity garbage will be right there in the lake of fire as a unholy Trinity. OK, you will burn because Allah's been told you not to say that mess. It ain't even in the Bible. Trinity is not in the Bible. The white man gave us that. But you think he's God. You think everything he say is true. OK, he opposes himself. You need to wake up talking about the Trinity. 
Allah says, if you don't stop saying this, you going to incur the wrath upon you. Okay, so going back to this, I am that I am. Jesus was telling them, I'm not about to be sacrificed. Okay, because Paul wanted to sacrifice Jesus, but he couldn't because Allah rescued him. And Jesus saying before Abraham was I am was telling them, look, before your God dog, before your daddy, Paul came, I am. Okay, I am the true Messiah. Paul stole me and tried to put me in another religion. But he was a messenger of Allah. Okay. He was trying to tell those Pharisees in a parable that their dad was not the Abraham of the past. Duh. Okay. He was trying to tell them that their dad was the ham. Read your Bible. Genesis 9, 22. The man who saw his father's nakedness. Ham. Okay. That's a picture of Paul because he is the only one. In all of the holy books to claim to be the father. And he said it twice. This man thought he was the last and final messenger. This man thought he was the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, coming out of Arabia. That's why he called the church saints. He stole that. Because there's only one time in history, 629 CE, where one man showed up in Mecca, in Paran, Deuteronomy 33 and 2, with 10 thousand converts and a new law the Quran that's the reason why Paul cursed Islam because his evil eye saw it through his power of divination and that's why that cup was in Benjamin's sack Saul eyed David and Paul seen Islam and he tried to curse it but he couldn't and that's why he was sour when those women were singing Saul has slain his thousands and David is ten thousands because the ten thousands follow the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Is you mad or is you mad or not? I really don't care. I'm simply out here to convey the message. And that's exactly what the prophet Muhammad was told. Hey, just convey the message. You're nothing more than a messenger. Jesus ain't nothing more than a messenger. You're not a father. Jesus told his disciples, call no man your father. But Paul takes it upon himself to say he is the father. That's why every time he was saying father, speaking of Jesus in those gospels, he was trying to point you to Paul. I and my father is one is telling you, look, me and Paul both is human. We're not God. OK, he that have seen me have seen the father. He's trying to tell you, look, me and Paul is one of the same. He's been trying to tell you. This is why Joseph was there when he was born. He was born into a fake father. Okay? And that is all your boy Paul. The wolf in sheep clothing that came out of the desert whom Jesus warned about with the false signs and the false miracles and the church is still scratching their head and they have no clue. They have no miracles. They have no healings. They have no power. All they have is lies, courtesy of Paul. So getting back to the before Abraham was I am. If Jesus was there during the time of Abraham and before the time of Abraham, what happened in the flood? Where was his grace and mercy for the people that drowned? Okay, you make no sense. And then go to the New Testament where y'all say Jesus was on the cross. And he had two thieves, one on his right and one on his left. Why didn't Jesus just say, hey, I paid the price for you. Y'all get down. I'm the lamb that has to die for everybody. No. Okay. When Jesus was supposedly crucified, he had one on his right and he had one on his left. You know why? Because that's a picture of the Trinity in Revelation. And that is the false prophet. The beast, and we know that's the wolf, the God dog. You know, every time you see somebody walking a little furry dog up the street and you see these people all worshiping this dog, think about it. White people have taught a lot of our people this, and I'm not being racist, I'm just telling the truth. They taught us to love dogs. Every time you see them, they got hair all over them. They got this little furry creature 
attached to them everywhere they go in a vehicle taking them to the spot that's a picture of the christian church worshiping paul the dog as god okay so when you go to that trinity in the book of revelation you have the beast you have the false prophet which is the church and then you have the devil that trinity my brother is going to be in the lake of fire because allah is one he has no partners. Jesus told you, I came to show y'all the one and only true God. And I'm his messenger in John 17, 3. But the church chooses to get their ears tickled. So the before I am was I am was not talking about Jesus being God. Now, the video has plenty plays. Every Christian that step up is getting slaughtered because they're speaking their own words and they don't have any scripture. There's not one scripture in the Bible where it says Jesus is God verbatim. Whenever you hear Jesus is Lord, that's basically just saying Jesus is rabbi. OK, Jesus is the master. That's all that's saying. And he's not the first person to be called master. Elijah was called master first. Elijah rose the dead first. Elijah did miracles. Okay? There is nothing so significant about Jesus other than the fact that he is the Messiah and he is the one that has to come back and clean up this mess that Paul left. Jesus has to come back and clean up this mess that Paul left and he will be a picture of the killing of the firstborn and Allah will cause him to die publicly just to show to the world that Jesus is not God. I challenge you to go through your Bible and find a scripture where Jesus tells you to worship him. OK, there's not one scripture. OK, you can go to Matthew chapter four. Jesus tells you to worship God. He doesn't say worship my father. He says worship God. He tells you to worship God. The Bible tells you to worship God. There's not one scripture where Jesus tells you to worship him. And for these Christians who are understudied, they want to take John 5, 23 and butcher it and say, well, you're supposed to honor Jesus like you honor the father. No, look at that scripture. The word God ain't in there. And that word father does not mean God. Jesus was speaking a parable again, dummy. He was speaking a parable. OK, and it makes sense that he was telling you, look, just like you honor Paul, you need to honor me. He wasn't talking about God almighty because he said, why you call me good? He was speaking in a parable and Jesus was misunderstood all the time. And the Christians, they don't even know Jesus. OK, they wasn't even there with Jesus. But all of a sudden. They can interpret everything that even his own disciples missed out. That that that's just crazy. If you really think you can understand everything Jesus is bringing out in the New Testament and his own followers were confused about him. OK, even after his so-called death, they was they was fishing. They was fishing. They didn't know who Jesus was. They didn't know. OK. They definitely knew he wasn't God. They definitely knew that. They just didn't know who he was. But you, according to your perception of John, you ignore Moses. You ignore Samuel. You ignore Hosea. You ignore Judah. All four of those books tell you God is not a man. God is not a man. God is not the son of man. You ignore all that to try to figure out the parables in the gospel but John, OK, so let's share this. Let's get this truth out. Don't think that the white man could not be wrong. Don't think that all this money you see in all these churches and it's and it's went everywhere. Don't think that something can't be wrong because there's something that is wrong, even though all this money has been invested in it for years. There's something terribly wrong with the church of today the church of today is walking around with the furry dog <laughs> the church of today has the dog hair has the fur all over them. 
You see them in the store and they got the fur on them. Okay? They're guilty of worshiping the dog. Worshiping the wolf in sheep clothing, the father of the Christian church. And that is the truth. You can take it to the bank. You can take it to the bank and you can tap your master, your rabbi or whoever your pastor, your camp leader on the shoulder and tell him, hey, take a look at this. Listen to what this dude is saying. OK, that's what you can do, because right here we have the truth in the house of David. We know that in Islam, we have the perfect saying and I love it. Now that I know about the Christian church and who they worship, and that's the God dog, Paul. When you hear that saying, there is no God. <laughs> there is no God but Allah. That's why he had to come up under a whole nother name. And if you say ha Allah, you say it backwards and, and you add an L, it's like you're saying Hallel. His name is holy. You can spell it frontwards, backwards. It is holy. Allah is truly the most perfect name. Okay. It is the most perfect name. And I encourage you to stop being like these Americans that hate Islam and read your Bible from cover to cover for the first time. Try to do that. <laughs> it will help you see that God is a jealous God and he doesn't share his glory with no one. Okay. That is seen in Isaiah. Isa, <laughs> that is seen in Isaiah. More in Isaiah than any other book. God will tell you that he is God and there's no God beside him. All right. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth. Share this channel. And for my brothers, I will be doing that video for you. The Malcolm X video. Uh, give me a little time and I'll put that together. Share this channel. We want this to go out to these pastors, to these Israelite camps. I take them all. OK, I put them all in the same category. They Christian. The Israelite camp is Christian. OK, and the Christian, of course, is Christian. The Catholic is still Christian. I take on them all. They all Christians and they all associate partners with God. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.